is helping me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus I believe his light can shine through me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus to help. I wonder where we should hang our banner. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? Making a fun banner, are you? Hi, Ollie. Yes, we're making a banner with our hands. Then we'll remember to use our hands to be kind. Kindness is so important. It's true. We can choose to be kind to everyone, too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, well, that is so kind. Oh, hi, friends. I'm Justin the Mailman and I'm delivering today's mail. And look, this is a get well card. This is so kind. And kindness is what today's story is about. Let me just put the story mail in the mailbox. (laughs) 
Our true story from the Bible is about a man walking on a road on his way to the city of Jericho. He was just walking down the road until all of a sudden, two men hurt the man and took his money. He had so many boo-boos. He needed help. Oh, look, here comes someone. Let's ask him to help. Everyone on the count of three yell, please help. One, two, three, please help. But he didn't stop to help. He just walked on by the hurt man. That's not kind. Here comes another man. Let's ask him to help. Ready? One, two, three, please help. But he didn't stop either. He just walked on by the hurt man. That's not kind. Then a third man came by. Uh-oh, he's a Samaritan. He's not going to help. The Samaritan people and the hurt man's people are not friends. There's no way the Samaritan will be kind and help the hurt man. But look, he's stopping. He's showing kindness and giving the hurt man bandages. Now the Samaritan is being kind and putting the hurt man on the donkey and taking him to a place to stay until he's all better. Wow, the Samaritan man was so kind. And do you know what? Jesus can help us choose to be kind too. When someone is hurt, we can choose to be kind and help them. When someone is sad, we can choose to be kind and give them a hug or cheer them up with kind words. Jesus will help us choose kindness. Jesus can help us do everything. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. I'll see you next time. So there's your story, and it's all true. The Samaritan chose to be kind to the hurt man. We can choose to be kind to everyone, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, the Samaritan chose to be kind to the hurt man. Jesus can help me choose to be kind to everyone. Kindness can change the world. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it. Good. Kind is cool. This looks so awesome. You know what? Instead of putting up our banner inside the clubhouse, I'm gonna put it up outside so everyone can see it. I'll see you next time. Bye. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6.
When was the last time you made a difference in this world? That sounds big, right? Like campaigning for class president. Or feeding every single hungry person in your town. Or running a marathon in support of ending cancer. Those are great things, big things. But the truth is, you don't have to do big things to make a difference. No person is an island. Well, not quite like that. It means that all of us, every single kid and grown up in this world, are connected. Everything you do, no matter how small, can affect someone else. You made a difference to your family this morning just by waking up. Good morning. Since you're going to make a difference no matter what you do, choose to make a difference for good. You make a difference for good when you say thanks to your mom for making your lunch. When you let another kid get in line ahead of you. When you get on FaceTime with grandma instead of playing just one more video game. Hey grandma. Even the smallest action in your day can make a big difference. It's like dropping a tiny pebble in a lake. The ripples can travel further than you could ever imagine. When you let God be all you need in every breath, the power of God's Spirit can truly help you make waves. Then others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
everybody, my name is Haley. Question for you, what do you like to do when it's summertime? Do you go on vacation or play in the sprinklers or fire hydrants? Do you stay inside all summer playing video games? One of my favorite things to do is go to the beach. It's the perfect place to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. You meet so many different kinds of people when you're at the beach. Surfers. Gnarly. Cowabunga. Treasure hunters. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey! Yeah! <gasps> A bottle cap from 2017. Tourists. Ooh, oh, oh! At the beach, not only can you see literal waves being made, but you can make waves by showing things like goodness, gentleness, and especially kindness. In today's story, you'll hear one of Jesus' most famous parables about someone who showed kindness. And it wasn't someone you'd expect. So, you know, don't bail on me, jellies. Hang ten and we can make the drop on a twin fin. Seaweed slushies, am I right? Um, wipe out a point break, uh, you know? <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I even saying? <laughs> uh, Later, <laughs> dudes, do dudettes. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. When Jesus traveled to a town, great crowds gathered to hear him teach. Fishermen and merchants, beggars and rich men, little children and important scholars. Many people listened with open minds and hearts, but a few just wanted to prove that they already had the answers. One day, a law expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you understand it? The law expert smirked. We can read off the answers perfectly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. The crowd was likely impressed. Clearly this man's a well-studied scholar. You have answered correctly. Do that and you will live. The law expert couldn't quite leave it at that. He wanted to know just how little he can do and still look good. By neighbor, are we talking someone within 50 feet of my house? Across the street? Not down the block, surely. I mean, really, who is my neighbor? Jesus didn't give the law expert a dictionary definition of neighbor. In fact, he gave a more creative answer. Jesus told a story. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. One day, a man prepared to make a trip from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Hmm, no bus, no Uber. Looks like I'll be walking. The way was steep and rugged with many twists and huge rocks. That looks like a giant egg. And that one looks like a goat. That one looks like a an excellent hiding place for robbers. <laughs> Stick him up. Get his cash. Don't forget the new shoes. The robbers stripped a man of everything. They even beat him up. They left him on the side of the road, nearly dead. Help, help please. The hot sun beat down on the injured man. He was too weak to even crawl. But after what seemed like hours, he finally heard footsteps. A preacher was traveling down a narrow road, practicing his next sermon. Now you may ask, why do we need to raise money for a brand new church building with an indoor swimming pool and covered parking for the pastoral Tesla? To do the Lord's work, of course. When the preacher saw the engine man ahead, he quickly shifted to the other side of the road. Water, please. Uh, not really my department, that's pastoral care. I'll send a memo. The preacher quickly went on his way, still polishing his sermon notes. As the sun got lower in the sky, the engine man started to lose hope. But once again, 
You heard footsteps. Help me. A church worship leader was hurrying along the road, singing along with the music in his earbuds. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. The worship leader glimpsed the wounded man ahead, but pretending he hadn't seen a thing, he tried to the other side of the road and kept right on going. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. The wounded man was desperate. The sun began to set as another traveler came along. The man tried to lift his head. Perhaps he could see the approaching stranger. Oh no. The stranger was a man from the nearby region of Samaria, even though they shared the same ancestors. The Jews and the Samaritans hated and mistrusted each other for hundreds of years. But unlike the preacher and the worship leader, the Samaritan stopped when he saw the wounded man. Oh no. The Samaritan felt compassion for the injured man. He slid off his motorcycle and used his first aid kit to clean and bandage the man's wounds. Let's get you someplace safe. Carefully, the Samaritan laid the injured man across the back of his motorcycle. Easy now. You take, take it slow. By the last light of the setting sun, the Samaritan brought the wounded man to an inn and made sure he had a good bed to sleep in for the night. The Samaritan found the innkeeper. Please take care of this man until he's all better. Here, here's my debit card, and if you have any extra expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. Murmurs of surprise rippled through the crowd as Jesus finished his unusual story. Jesus looked directly at the law expert. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The law expert's eyes dropped, mind racing, looking for a way out. But the answer was clear. The one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Through his story, Jesus was clear. Your neighbor is not only someone who lives near you or is like you. Your neighbor is anyone who needs your help and kindness. Showing kindness to someone can be easy, especially when that someone is a lot like you. But Jesus' parable reminds us that we should be kind to everyone, even people who are different. People who look different, act different, and think different than we do. Showing kindness means treating people the way you want to be treated. It can mean helping someone who seems lost. Okay, so you wanna take a right at the one and then a left on Dillon Beach Road. There are some great views of the sunset out there. You'll love it. Kindness can mean learning how to communicate in a new way. Okay, so hanging 10 is when I hang all 10 of my toes off of the surfboard. <laughs> that is so totally rad. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> When you're kind, it could mean you're giving up what you want to do to spend time with someone else. Wow, you are really good at this game. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to show kindness and a lot of people who need it. So the one thing to remember today is this, show kindness to everyone. You can make waves of kindness to the people around you, not just your friends and family, but everyone. And if you need help, ask God. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you show kindness. And if you need some practice, you can always go to the beach, if you can find one. Okay, so I go west uh, a bunch of miles. No, no, east a bunch of miles. Wait, no, maybe, maybe I'm upside down.
When was the last time you made a difference in this world? That sounds big, right? Like campaigning for class president. Or feeding every single hungry person in your town. Or running a marathon in support of ending cancer. Those are great things, big things. But the truth is, you don't have to do big things to make a difference. No person is an island. Well, not quite like that. It means that all of us, every single kid and grown up in this world, are connected. Everything you do, no matter how small, can affect someone else. You made a difference to your family this morning just by waking up. Good morning. Since you're going to make a difference no matter what you do, choose to make a difference for good. You make a difference for good when you say thanks to your mom for making your lunch. When you let another kid get in line ahead of you. When you get on FaceTime with grandma instead of playing just one more video game. Hey grandma. Even the smallest action in your day can make a big difference. It's like dropping a tiny pebble in a lake. The ripples can travel further than you could ever imagine. When you let God be all you need in every breath, the power of God's Spirit can truly help you make waves. Then others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. All the things of summer that we want to do Barbecue, chicken, go in a canoe 
build a sand castle until it's through. Summer skies are so blue. <laughs> so, 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 so and so, so and so. Welcome to the so and so show. So and so, so and so. Summer at the so and so show. Take it. <laughs> Straight up in the sky with a homemade jetpack What could go awry like the fuse? Summer skies are so blue So, 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 so and so So and so Welcome to the so and so ah! So and so And I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. You know, it's hard to believe it's already July. I know. Have you done anything fun yet? <laughs> Have I done anything fun yet? Well, just yesterday I had a cookout with all my friends, oh. and we had fireworks and burgers and oh. hot dogs. We even had potato sack races. Oh, and a pie eating contest. That sounds amazing. Oh, it was. In fact, I have a piece of pie right here. Oh well, thanks, buddy. No. <laughs> what? It's not for you. It's not. Wait, what? No, you weren't at the cookout. No, I, well, that's because you didn't invite me. Because I invited you last year and you didn't come. Well, I might have this year. <laughs> Would you? No. See? No, look, I had things to do. I couldn't get out. Ha! Huh? What? Ha <laughs> ha! What, what? I actually saw you out. Oh. You drove by my house in your car and you just kept driving by without stopping or anything. I waved at you. And you didn't wait back. I had to get to the grocery store before it closed. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. It takes me a long time to pick out cheese. You didn't wait, Brandon. You didn't wait. You acted like I wasn't even there. You were so unkind. Well, you're being unkind for not sharing pie. If I'm not sharing pie because you didn't wait. I mean, I, it's just basic manners. It, did someone say manners? <laughs> No, 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 it's my job. Stop it! I'm the one with manners! No, you're not! I say please and thank you! Ah! Yes, thank you! Oh, won't you sit down? Oh my. What a predictable mint I have stumbled upon. Brandon wouldn't even wave at me, Melinda. Oh my. At a cookout I wasn't even invited to. Oh He's my. been invited before, but he doesn't show up. Oh my, no more. It seems we have a classic escalating manners quandary. Communication is key, gentlemen. When you fail to use your words like please and thank you and salted curds, you will find you've made a mistake that will lead to heartache and sometimes acid reflux. But talk to your doctor about that. Now, it sounds like Brandon is upset at being left out. Yes. And John, you are upset because you've felt ignored. That's right. Well... I think we both could have exhibited some kindness. I, I guess I could have invited you again, even though you probably would have missed it because of cheese. And I guess I should have waved when I drove by your house. Well, why didn't you? Because I never know what to do with my hands. Here, watch. Oh, 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 that is troubling. Oh, a manly wave is very important to let someone know you care and that you see them. I believe I have something that might help. Mm. Let's see. Oh. oh, no, not that. Let's keep going. Okay. Oh, not that. Oh, I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, let's get these things out of the way. Okay. Oh, not. 
Ah, uh, there it is. 101 waves that can change the world. Uh, change the world? Well, maybe not overnight, but when you wave to someone and they feel seen, that will lead to them waving to someone else. Oh. Kindness can't solve all the world's problems, but it certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> Wave number 72, the windmill of joy. Oh. Stand up, please. And the desk is gone. Was it supposed to disappear? Yes. But it's still gone. Oh, Amazing! Wow. I don't know how I do it. Well, we just... Well, now the windmill of joy starts with your right hand mm -hmm. on your left hip. And then you say, hello! Hello! <laughs> how does that feel? Uh, great. Oh, great. That's great. Let's do another one. Oh, very well. Number 27, the porpoise. The porpoise. Your hand is in the ocean and it starts swimming. Oh, nice. How do you do? <laughs> and finally, number 97, uh -huh. the look at me. Hello, hello, hey, hi. Hi there, hello, hello. 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 hi. 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 Hello. hey, hi. hi. Well, boys, I believe my work here is done. Well, thank you, Melinda. Yes, thank you. How lovely. <laughs> oh. <gasps> what? It's Bible story time with Kellen. What's up, gents? Hello! Hey, Colin! Hey! Hello! Are you all okay? Define okay. Fair. So, I've got a Bible story for you today, but I'm hoping I could use your heads. You got it! Then join me for another edition of Human Head Puppet Theater! <laughs> Our story today is from the book of Luke. A law expert wanted to test Jesus, so he asked them a question. What must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus asked the man, what is written in the law? And the expert replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him, that was the right answer. But then the man asked, who is my neighbor? So Jesus told this story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when suddenly robbers attacked him. <laughs> hey, give me all your money. What? Yes, you wanna do this the hard way? No. Ah, no. Oh. Oh. Give me all oh, right. I give me oh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, did I actually hurt you? No, no, I'm fine. I was just acting. Wow, that was really good acting, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. And give me your clothes ah. as well. No, no. Ah. Not my cloak. Yeah. Not my cloak. Oh, Please don't take what my cloak. What is this fast oh. oh. gold glitter? Oh. Oh. oh, I am almost. <sighs> The robbers left the man who was nearly dead. But I'm not. Now, a priest was coming down the same road. He was a very religious person. Surely he would help. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Uh, Ew, gross! I can't look! Help me! Oh, still alive! Please. 
I need you to stop talking. I might start to feel guilty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm in a bit of a rush. I, you'll have to excuse me. No. No, no. The priest walked by the man on the other side of the road and left him there. Good luck. I don't believe in luck, so God bless you. Just not me. Oh. Then someone else came, a Levite, an expert in God's law. Surely he would help. Yes, indeed, I'm walking. I'm oh, old. Man. Oh, how disgusting. Oh, don't look at me. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that was a close one. <laughs> oh, shush, shush, shush. Now, where was I? Oh, right. I'm walking. Yes, indeed, I'm walking. I'm walking, walking, walking. Two people, both very religious, probably highly regarded and respected in their community, they both refused to help the man in need. One last person walked by, a Samaritan. Now, an important thing to know is that the Jewish people and the Samaritans, they did not get along. You could say they even hated each other. So it was so surprising when this happened. Oh, oh. Oh, wow, uh, you look terrible. Hey, let me take a look. Uh, oh, they roughed you up pretty good there. Uh, hey, hey, hold on. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, okay, I'm back. Um, I'm uh, just going to put a little olive oil and a little wine on your wounds. Okay. There you go. Ah, it stings. I, I know, I know, but it's supposed to help clean out those wounds. Okay. Now I'm just going to put a bandage on you. So, okay. Up, up. Okay, uh, here we go. These are... Okay, there, there, okay. Oh, hurry, please. <laughs> All right, I'll just put you here on my donkey. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, 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 great. oh thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, are you ready to go? Yeah. All right, here we go. Hold okay. on. Okay. <laughs> the Samaritan took the man to an inn and gave the innkeeper money to take yes. care of him and then he agreed to pay for any extra expenses to help the man. The Samaritan did all of this for a stranger. After telling the story, Jesus turned to the law expert and asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked? What do you think? Was it the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? The law expert replied, the one who felt sorry for him. And Jesus said, go and do as he did. The end. Great job, fellas. Thanks, Kellen. You too. Yeah, that was a great story. I loved how the person to help the man was the one least expected. Mm -hmm. Yes. Most of the time, it's easy to love people that we're close to or feel comfortable around. But Jesus' story reminds us that we should show kindness, not just to the people we know, but to everyone. And the Holy Spirit can help us do that. The kindness that God requires of us is life-changing. It's a kindness that makes things right. And that's what we get to do as Jesus followers, get to be a part of helping God make things right. I love it. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, see you next time. You know it. Later. Later. Man, Jesus really threw that law expert a curveball. Yeah, it's, it's easy to think about our neighbors as the people that live near us or the people who are like us. But Jesus wants us to be kind to everyone, even when it's hard. So, reveal, reveal the question. question! How can you be kind even when it's hard? Right. It, it might be hard to be kind to your little brother or sister because they keep bugging you. You know, maybe play a game they want to play and let them make the rules. Maybe it's hard to be kind to someone because they aren't being kind to you. Mm. You could try talking to them or find out if there's anything they want or need. Yeah, yeah. It might seem harder to be kind to someone that's different from you. But if we live like Jesus wants us to, we're going to look for ways to show kindness to everyone, even when it's hard. So talk about it with each other. How can you be kind even when it's hard? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. <gasps> Goodbye! Go higher. Ooh, ah! 
That's definitely the end. <laughs> the boomerang. Oh. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Hey. <gasps> oh, nice. <gasps> hey. 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 The Doppler effect. Oh. Hello? Yeah. Hey. The water slide. Oh. oh. Ooh. 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 15, the trout. Oh. oh. You know the trout. Yes, no. yes. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. You're like this. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. This is the longest trip. <laughs> <laughs>